Are people going to hell? Are people going to heaven? Have people already went to hell? And have people already went to heaven? Are we in hell? Or are we in heaven? Do we choose whether to go into hell, the bottomless pit, or to go up into heaven, you know, like to the mountains, the highest point, the most godly? Are we literally living in hell? And heaven is coming? Is heaven and hell within inside of you and how you choose how to live your life? These are just questions. I'm ha I have questions. If heaven's inside of you, <clears throat> then that means fire that proceeds out of your mouth is coming down from heaven, from God. We're made in the image of God, and God has given us the power to speak with our mouths, to sharpen our swords, and to spit out fire. They're coming at us like a flood. They're trying to put the fire out. We've been lied to about everything. Just these days, more common sense gives you the answer to what we've been lied about for all these centuries. Are we eternal beings? Is there no place in heaven for murderers and mongers and sorcerers and idolaters and whatnot? Of course not. There's no place in heaven for them. Shall they burn? Well, hopefully. Hopefully they burn because they get scorched by the word of God that proceeded out of someone's mouth. But are they going to burn in hell if there's no place in heaven for them? What if uh, there's no place in heaven for them because when your soul is a godly conscience soul and you follow his law and your spirit is dwelling in heaven and when your spirit is dwelling in heaven you're telling the truth, you're not a murderer, you're not an idolater, you're, you're not any of those things. So there is no place in heaven for those. Does that mean at this moment, while you're still alive? Or when life is over and you're being judged at that time? Or are we being judged every single day? You know what we do, our works can't get us one way or another. It can't get us to hell. It can't get us to heaven. It's faith along with works. Because of your faith, you produce good fruit. The fruit that is heavenly. I mean, that's some, that tastes heavenly. Or that, oh my God, that fruit is nasty, man. It's physical and uh, spiritual, literal. So when it comes to um, anything you do that's sinful, well, if you stop doing that sin, it's it, it's only because you have the spirit in you, and uh, it's because you choose you you want to stop doing that sin. It's not going to get you um, saved, but. Your mind is more in the mindset of a heavenly realm when you 
resist the flesh. The flesh that always wants to sin. You guys got to remember this for those who don't. When you're in heaven, but you're still living in hell, um, as your spirit realm is in heaven and your earthly, fleshly, sinful body is on earth, that's a living hell right now, <clears throat> you're going to struggle with um, constantly. Your flesh just wants to sin. It's what it's used to. What it knows, what it remembers, it draws you in. Your spirit is what fights it. And that's the uh, spiritual battle. That's the mental, spiritual battle that we all struggle with. Until God is done with everything and gives us a, uh, a new body. One that matches our spirit. One... A body that cannot possibly sin. If you're in heaven right now, you can't sin. Because your spirit has been changed. Your spirit isn't sinning. Your flesh is sinning. So when it talks about how you can't sin, well, it sounds like it's impossible. Or it sounds like it's a... contradiction in the Bible but it's somewhere in there where it explains how you can't you can sin no longer once you're in heaven once your spirit is literally in heaven as you are still walking the earth living in hell on earth but in heaven spiritually your mind is there your body's still here. The earth is reserved for fire, and fire is God's judgment. Same as the clouds, God is coming with the clouds. That's why they're mimicking the clouds, because they're doing it literally, but God is talking about his judgment. Fire and cloud. Fire during the day. I mean, uh, fire at night and cloud during the day. They knew to stay still when they seen fire during the day. I mean, at night, and cloud during the day, until it was time to roll. Everything is similar. Everything, everything in the Bible is just similar. It's going to happen pretty much the same way. It's just a different time. History just repeats and repeats and repeats. Satan has been doing this for longer than you have, you know what I mean? At least he remembers doing it from the very beginning of creation. He remembers tricking every generation. So I love how I love how this generation thinks they're slick. Like they're going to get away with it this time. I still believe the last day is what is going to be uh, the final change in our appearances because there's going to be something different about us uh, not that we're dying okay not that we're dying but that everybody's going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye so I think a lot of the church Bible thumpers, um, that still believe that the church age is in existence, still believe that we have at least seven years to go or whatever, still believe that there's a thousand year period, because if there wasn't, if it was one day, then people want to know what day that was. And I've already said it. So Timelines continue to line up. That's what it's all about. That's why we have time. That's why the clock is ticking. Time is running out. Okay, There's nothing anybody can do about it. You can race against time, but time is faster. <clears throat> so on that last day is when I believe... Um, well, that's when you'll see 
the body that Christ was um, promising you, along with your spirit. But you're going to see that we're still going to be on earth. And you're going to remember. You're going to have your memory also. And you're going to see that nobody died. And you're going to see that Satan's um, influence is gone. And it's like living, you know, you know how you're very comfortably sleeping or you have a really good dream and you're so comfortable in that dream and it's a pleasant dream and just like in a park setting or whatever and there's people around you can tell there's it's all pure good it's like that that's how we're gonna feel well rested for an eternity are we gonna get tired and take naps I don't know probably yeah probably are we still going to have babies and kids? I don't know. I mean, what about the parable with with the with the guy, the girl who had five uh, husbands and they all died and they were all brothers. So she was allowed to marry each one legally um, when they were deceased. And then the Pharisees tried to trip Christ up and ask him, well, whose wife will she be? in heaven out of the seven I think it was the seven people and uh, Christ said uh, you neither um, marry nor given into marriage in heaven because you are married to the lamb of Christ you are the bride so I don't know I don't think I don't think um, by that literally it sounds like no there's no there's no, um, there's no more being married, you know. I mean, it's going to be the same back as it was in the very beginning, Adam and Eve. But, um, are you going to be having babies again, is what people want to know. Are you still going to be having sex? I, I, you know, I think the reason that that part was created throughout the existence of the world was to get seven and a half billion people probably 7.7 .7 when it's all said and done it'll probably be seven billion people seven hundred seventy seven million seven hundred seventy seven thousand seven hundred seventy seven point seven 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 when it's all over and done with you know the seven billion which represents the seven thousand and then the remnant which is the rest <clears throat> so that remnant I believe is the elite 7 billion I believe or everybody who is blind right now doesn't see anything <clears throat> and favorite place and heaven and hell are not what we thought it was yes there's a heavenly realm up in, in, in our skies in, in heaven is God sitting above our earth in heaven Is he, is he in our pineal gland? Is that where he resides? Is that what God is? Is it a place you go to when you die? Heaven? Christ sits in your temple, right? He resides in your temple. He's the leader of your church. You're just part of the body. Because where he sits, where he resides in everyone in everyone's temple, he's the leader. If you see the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place, in the temple, flee to the mountains. You know, let people know what's going on with uh, who's who is in charge now, who's who is sitting in your temple. Let them know that. 
And if the abomination is sitting in their temple, you gotta let them know that. Try to give them a good way to turn them to God instead of a forceful. But, um, you know, again, I think we're at that time where God is telling us to let everyone be who they are. The evil still, the righteous still, because he, I feel comfortable enough to say, I think I've, I'm just about finished with my testimony. I, I think I, fi I figured out their whole entire script. Not sure exactly about the dates and the time frames, but the season, my last timing, my last, um, you know, if, if, if three, if three, if there's three confirmations, it just feels better to know that at least that's going to be a, at least it's going to be a time frame, a date that something drastically worldwide changing is going to happen. <clears throat> but again, you have to see what they're going to do first. And, um, Stop waiting for the uh, Antichrist to rise up and say that he's the Antichrist. Because Satan already did that. You can't see him. You can't see him standing in abomination, making it desolate. That's why you didn't flee to the mountains. You're, you're literally waiting for it. <clears throat> that's just that carrot that um, you're never going to catch. If you're literally waiting for a man... To come as Jesus Christ, same thing. You're going to keep waiting. If you're literally waiting for a peace treaty to be signed, and then we're going to have a seven-year peace deal or war or something, keep following that carrot stick. If you think the rapture is real, okay, I did to it one time. I don't anymore. If you're deceived when the aliens, if, if the aliens come down, or Nephilims, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the Nephilim, the, the giants, because they're really, they're really pushing that. If you see that in the skies and in your face when the lights are completely out, I challenge you to step into it like a Slim Jim. Step into a Slim Jim! Step into it. Look for yourself to see if it's real. What, are you afraid to get stomped on by a big giant? Remember, Wizard of Oz. Little guy behind a giant curtain. A little ant behind a giant curtain. Where do people go then when they die? If there's no heaven and no and no hell, Robin, like like the way that they say, then where do you go? I don't know. I don't know where you go. Maybe heaven is a a, a, a purgatory. It's a it's a place of um it's it's a place of paradise. It's a it's a waiting, waiting place. It's it's where a bunch of people get together. Because I understand spirits are the same as us. They have personalities. And um, they just don't have bodies. So there's still spirits alive, but they just don't have bodies. Maybe the ones that haven't learned, that died, maybe they're the ones that... Um, Satan is, is using like he's continually building his army and the ones that uh, died but were righteous and learned their lesson uh, maybe they are ministering spirits or did God already create ministering spirits and he created man in his, in his image but what happens to you when your image disappears okay but your spirit still goes. Because demons travel through people. And they are just homeless. They don't have a home. They don't have a body. They, they don't have a vessel. And um, they can dwell in different people's vessels. 
But when you finally kick all the demons out, they can't dwell there anymore. Not in your temple. Not in your church. They're not standing in your temple. They don't sit there. And uh, they're not allowed in your church. So They haven't paid their dues to the Lord. Heaven's inside of you. Heaven's inside of you. I see everybody living. I see how people are going to turn back to God. Everything everything clicks and makes sense as to how they're going to do it and why. Because how many people do you warn about pending anything in your family or anybody in person? How many people listen? You know what I mean? So you can see that that doesn't work. YouTube, some people listen, but still, mainly for me, my message is to the elite now. I mean, I'm, I've am i already understood that the 99, um, as soon as the one goes astray, the 1%, the elite, you leave the 99 because I understand that the 99 are fine. And they know what to do when you go... For the lost sheep people want to try to make it seem like they're fallen angels and they're some kind of spirits of ministering fallen angel spirits that they can't possibly be saved they're human okay uh they just kept they just kept it all in the family and that's why they've built they're Archie Bunkers. Rob Reiner. But to think that the elite can't be saved, well, it's nonsense because it doesn't matter how evil you are. Those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Every tongue is going to confess and every knee is going to bow. That's literal. And the reason being is because the 7,000 that, uh, you know, were slain, when that six seal opens up and that great earthquake happens, those 7,000, that perfect fulfillment, complete amount of number, 7 billion, are going to um, be slain by God, uh, by the Spirit, and turn to Him. And the remnant... Well, because it's happening back to back, it's in the same sentence. And the remnant were frightened and gave glory to God. So if you look at it as 7,000, it only, then a remnant looks, it has to be less than 7,000, right? Of course. It has to be like 500, you know what I mean? But when you take 7 billion, then it has to be like 500 million is the remnant that turns to God. Because uh, because what God does is he finally takes away everything that they have up in the skies. And, um, and on top of that, takes away his creation of the sun, the moon, and the stars. Because he has a different, he has a different light for us. Because now we're all spiritually lit up. But at the same time... At the same time, he just has a different... Just like he has a different body, a different um, uh, light on a different earth. Even though I believe it's going to be the same earth, it's just going to be different. It's going to be new. It also says in uh, somewhere in Isaiah, in you know, the Old Testament, that um, he's going to... Uh, destroy and a clean broom sweep and New Jerusalem 
straight down. So does he literally do that? Does he literally just take spirits up and everybody, clean broom sweep, make it new like that? I mean, I'm sure it's possible. <clears throat> I just try to figure out the details. You know, why not? Why not figure out the details? They're planning on having one hell of a new year. Some things just get so much simpler towards the end. Because the knowledge increased. It just keeps increasing. When you expect a certain time frame and it passes by, you understand why. And then here comes another time frame. But you know, I'm not setting rapture dates here, okay? I'm setting fat, f facture, f fake rapture dates. They have to show us that God's people were taken off of this earth. They have to try to get you to believe they have to live here another thousand years, so get in line and get that freaking chip. They have to make you think that that chip is literal when it's already in your head. You either have the seal guy in your forehead, or you have the the mark of the beast still in your forehead. Either way, it can be in, it can be uh, plucked out. Now, remember, there's no place in heaven for any of those. And that's why when it talks about no place in heaven for any of those, then what place do they have to be? So while they're on earth and they're still that way and they haven't learned their lesson and then here we are, the most people ever in the history of the world, 7.6, 7 almost billion people, um, Can you imagine everybody having the same heart? The way that you feel, but with no possible tiredness. There are no drugs. There is no temptation. Satan is gone. The influence is eliminated. Electricity doesn't exist anymore. There's no reason for it. It's just back to the horses, man. You ride your horses. Uh, but this time nobody's trying to kill each other and everybody will look out for each other and It's back to The barter system everything is ours. We share it all. There's no greed Yeah, that's heaven for sure That's absolute heaven, but it's also a reality that's going to happen here on earth very soon but how can you really believe it when you've never seen it before? You know, if you've seen Bigfoot, don't you have faith that you've seen him? Well, sorry Sasquatch, but uh, I've never seen Bigfoot, and I don't believe in him. And I've never seen uh, aliens and uh, dinosaurs, and I don't believe them. And I've seen God face to face, and I believe in him. But I've never seen him. Uh, I know who he is. But that's my faith. Something of that's the, of the unknown. Something you've never seen before. Something you've never experienced. Something you're waiting for. Something you're believing in that's going to happen. It's called faith. I believe this is going to happen. I believe the elite believe that they will get everybody to turn against each other and kill each other and then kill the rest of us. Uh, I believe that is their plan. That's, that is what they want to do because they don't believe in God. But I believe that as soon as they do their plan, which is the deception, it will turn back the 7,000 perfect fulfillment number slash 7 billion. And then it's God's turn to show the elite once and for all to get the Jews to turn back to God because that's who rules the world, the literal Jews. They're not the 144,000, okay? Not at all. Jerusalem's not even being represented by God anymore, and neither is the church. It's 
this church right here, this temple right here is representing the kingdom of God in every one of the other two witnesses that are out there. But I don't let anybody take residence in my church. It's closed. It's private. I, I am, uh, I am. God is, and I am. So, we all are, and He is. We're not worshiping the image of the beast or the false prophet or the antichrist the trinity satan we're worshiping the image of god because that's who we were made in the image of god we will not worship the image of the beast you want to think it's sophia and the, and the ai technology um robots taking us over okay think what you want i don't tend to believe certain things that you think you can't kill yourself at a certain point uh, when men seek death and they can't find it that's because you don't understand that seeking death is to lose your life and it's to gain your eternal life through Christ because you gave up your life you're, you're dead to the world we die all day long in Christ Jesus when you seek to lose your life, you will gain your life. When you seek to gain your life, you're going to lose it. So seeking death is what the gang stalkers need to start doing. Um, they're not going to find it just just moment, just at this moment. But uh, when the power's cut on them and everything happens, well, their job is over. They ain't gang stalking us anymore. And the ones that know me, well, I told you before, I'll answer your questions. I'll be glad to. Because now I know nobody, nobody wants to talk until what I say is going to happen, happens. And what others can feel is going to happen, happens. I'll be glad to answer questions because I'm going to slay you guys uh, for the Word of God. Because you guys are going to be willing to listen. Right now... I have to slay you by the word of God because some of you aren't listening. And that's where you get burned up in hell because you're getting the fire spewed out of my mouth and it's devouring my enemies and slaying their souls.